వెరీ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ టు ఆల్ డిగ్నిటరీస్ డెలిగేట్స్ అండ్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ మెంబర్స్ అండ్ డియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ యూ ఆల్ ఫర్ దర్డ్ డే ఆఫ్ ఎస్టీటీపీ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఆన్ గ్రీన్ కెమిస్ట్రీ అండ్ అడ్వాన్స్ ఎలనెటికల్ టెక్నిక్స్ ఆఫ్ pharmaceuticals and product development aspects as per the regulatory requirements i request ms tashma to introduce our today's speaker dr t narendra kumar sir thank you madam i am audible yes yeah, sir yeah, please continue we are, we are audible ma but little bit louder okay sir thank you sir good morning to one and all welcome to the third day of short term training program i am from pharmacy in department of pharmaceutical quality assurance at triper it's my privilege to introduce today's eminent speaker who contributed his whole career towards pharmacy field dr m v narendra kumar talluri sir presently sir is working as a head knowledge management at dysel kairol technologies hyderabad india Previously, sir has worked for Naifar Hyderabad as assistant professor, head of department in pharmaceutical analysis, and also in charge for LCMS in central analytical instrumentation facility, and also worked for Biocon Bangalore as scientific manager. Sir has received his PhD from CSIR in Institute of Technology, Hyderabad. Sir has guided four PhDs from the master students. Sir, many publications in peer-reviewed journals. Sir, also member of scientific societies like Royal Society of Science, of Science Editors, Dubai. Sir has been awarded with Young Pharmaceutical Analyst Award in 2011, Best Research Scientist Award in 2016 from Naipur, Hyderabad, Bharat Vikas Award in 2017. Contribution in field of standardization of herbal and Ayurvedic drugs from Institute of Self Reliance, Journal of Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Analysis Quality Award in 2017 from Journal of Pharmaceutical and Biomedical Analysis. Sir was elected as Associate Fellow of AP Academia of Sciences in 2014. Sir is a reviewer for many international journals like RSC Advances. analytical methods new journal of chemistry scientific reports etc and sir is also a trained glp inspector with this brief introduction i welcome dr mv narendra kumar talluri sir to take over the session thank you sir yeah good morning is it audible yes sir yeah, it is sir, audible audible yeah. sir yeah thank you thank you for the nice introduction i am sorry for the delay and today i am going to deliver a talk on hplc and lcms basics mostly and some applications we'll try to see the possibility so hplc is the one uh, having good number of types here like analytical hplc generally we use for the compound identification we are injecting the standard and uh, comparing the sample So prediction time matches is yes, compound is identified and see the area under the peak so that is for quantitative analysis so it is very commonly used that is analytical experience so next one is prepared to based on the quantity we are going to isolate if it is less than 0.5 grams we are saying it is semi prepared to if it is more than 0.5 grams we are saying it is prepared to of course in this is also used for process uh, analytical technology which is also is part of that so if it is from grams to kilograms in manufacturing quantities that is known as process uh, lcm experiments so there are different types of experiments is we are using of course analytical one is, which is very commonly used for the routine analysis and method development and validation and the quality control aspects why we go for the hplc uh, like for simultaneous analysis we want to see the more number of analytes uh, in a single run in that case simultaneous analysis 
in that case, it's as easy as high resolution peak to peak separation is required. In that case, we are using the HPLC. And high sensitivity cost per million or cost per billion level of analysis is not to use, then HPLC is twice. And good repeatability, injection to injection, good repeatability is there. So that's the reason we need to use HPLC. Small sample size, 20 microliters or 10 microliters of sample is enough to inject to see the counter down. And moderate analytic conditions, that conditions what we have developed, like maybe pH adjustment is required, filtration is required. So, but finally we are getting the uh, good results. So analytical conditions are not very much difficult to control. So moderate analytical conditions, that's the reason it is a success very well in both in academic and industry. No need to vaporize the samples like it, uh, GC, GC required vaporize, uh, like volatile samples only we can inject in case of GC, but uh, HPLC is a choice for non volatiles and uh, we are able to get good repeatable results. Easy to fractionate the sample and purify the sample. Like what is we are saying, like a preparatory HPLC. Once we want purity samples in a larger quantities, uh, which are like a complex from the, which are from the complex mixture, at the time, it gives us a choice for the isolation of the compounds from the milligram to the maybe in tons based on the its uses. Like uh, in case of analytical HPLC, uh, we are using the RD labs. In case of like process HPLC, we are using the just manufacturing side. So, in addition to that, uh, the, it is a non destructive technique. The detectors, which are commonly used like U detector, is uh, not a destructive detector. So, that's the reason. Well, we are focusing on HPLC. To understand some basics about HPLC, how instruments look like. So we taken here example as a uh, modular HPLC system to easy to understand. Uh, of course, monitor, we can see it's a PD detector that is a reason there are four different windows are there. So you can able to see all these different wavelengths simultaneously. That is the purpose of PD, photodiode detector. We discuss something more about that on the slides. So uh, we know that there is like bottles, water bottles, like the water bottle or mobile phase bottles are there on the top of that. And uh, related to that, there is a system controller which control all these modules. Next one are pumps, like pump A and pump B. So the mobile phase, one from the bottle uh, taken by one pump, another bottle will be taken by the another pump. So based on the composition, what you are giving, say for example, 60 to 40. 60% from the say bottle A, that is water. Yeah, maybe 40% from B, that is methanol. So in that way, flow rate is, for example, one ml per minute. So 0.6 ml will be taken from, from uh, A and 0.4 ml will be taken from the other pump. In that way, there will be mixing. There is a mixture behind these two pumps that will be taken care of mixing these two propositions and sending towards this column. Is here, there is a uh, union here. You can replace that union with the column. And uh, then after separation phase step, that is reaching to the detector, which is top of the right side. So in that way, that uh, separation takes place for the flow rate, based on the flow rate, what the composition we decide and we reach into the uh, detector and we move from the line. So we can see here the column, generally 25 centimeters of length are different sizes or dimensions are available in the columns, but 25 centimeters is the standard column that we use. A 0.46 internal, 2.6 mm internal ID, 5 micrometer particle size of standard colors that are used by the uh, any analytical lab. Next one is this is a preparatory HPLC. We are saying about the analytical HPLC and preparatory HPLC. In case of preparatory HPLC, you need to use more flow rates. The pumps capacity need to be increased. Instead of 1 ml flow, maybe required 10 ml or 20 ml or 50 ml. So, based on the requirement, you need to use flush the bubble phase with high flow rate. So in that case, you need to load more quantity. The purpose of preparatory HPLC is to purify the sample. In that case, you need to have good, uh, like uh, uh, quantity, capable uh, columns are required. Then you have to the columns. You can see the second figure that is a preparatory column. Of course, the output is from the run. X-axis is time, and Y-axis is the uh, intensity of signal. You can see uh, the general HPLC column. The manual injection shown here at the top, that is uh, to inject this sample of like volume of maybe 20 microliters. If you want, you can take 25 microliters syringe and take the volume and inject it to the rio dynode injector. So it, the loop is capacity is fixed already, say 20, 20 microliters. So the 20 microliters will be taken by the loop and the remaining will be uh, like the 
going down. So the fixed volume, you need to inject more volume. So there will not be any air bubble under into this fixed volume. So because you are injecting more volume, instead of printing that little, you need to control volume. If you take exaggerated of the millimeters and inject it into, there is a chance of entering air bubbles. So if it is a manual injector, of course it is a, for example, with the auto sample, there is no issue. So you can do the command like 500 liters, 100 liters, 100 liters. It automatically asks for the, the volume required. Uh, it is already controlled by the precise uh, controlling mechanism. So the elution, the mobile phase, what you are going to use is generally isocritic or gradient. Isocritic is known that the composition is always fixed. Say, for example, 60, 40. 60% of water and 40% of methanol. Or 20, 80. 20% 20 of methanol and 80% of water. So that is constant throughout the uh, total uh, runtime. That is isocritic. Gradient is one where you are changing the composition of the mobile phase with respect to time. That is nothing but a gradient. We'll see one example of how gradient works here. Pump A and pump B. Pump A contains water and pump B contains methanol. So, for example, one ml flow rate is given. So, at 60 40, the command given by you, and A is water and B is methanol. So, 0.6 ml will be taken from pump A, and the next 0.4 ml will be taken from pump B. And there is a mixture chamber that will be mixed with these two fractions and flushing towards the column. To give one ml uh, per minute flow rate by mixing these two in a 60 positive ratio and flushing towards the column. So this will be the unlike will be interacting with the column and uh, separated one after another and reaching uh, out as a schedule uh, and chromatograph. So we'll see example of like uh, how the gradient program can be given. So pump B is 15% that is nothing but methanol. Remaining 80% uh, will be A will be automatically taken. So the first five minutes is that 15 percent is fixed, and the next 10 to 20 minutes of time, you are increasing the uh, percentage from 15 to 90 percent. So slowly, the step by step, based on the time differences available, it will be fractionated accordingly and taken that volume required and adjusted the uh, 15 to 90 percent within that 10 minutes of time. So that the reason the polarity is increasing the mobile phase so that the, all the analytes which are required to elude out will be eluded out because the strength of the mobile phase increasing. Initially, 5% of uh, methanol is there. And uh, after reaching to the uh, like 10 minutes, it is uh, reaching to be 90% of methanol. So the organic quantity has increased. That time, next 10 minutes, when 10 to 20 minutes of time, it is there with 90%. All the compound needs to be eluded out within that 10 minutes. And of course, we are coming back 20 to 20 minutes and say go to the back to 15 percent because we want to make the system ready for the next analysis to the initial condition. That is the reason we are taking going back to the initial 15 percent and the system is getting ready with the saturation of the same mobile phase composition for the next sample to be analyzed. That is the reason we keep the gradient profile the initial condition and the final condition within the gradient itself to ensure that it will be ready and uh, make it ready for the next analysis. So, I want the difference between this uh, isocratic and gradient. Mobile phase uh, composition is constant, that is uh, isocratic, and mobile phase concentration varies with the time, that is a gradient. So, if you see the late, uh, pick up the late elution, uh, the peak which is eluded out at the last minute in the ground down. In case of isocratic, it looks like a little bit broader or flat. But in case of gradient, the mobile phase composition concentration. Our polarity increases, that the reason the bits are very sharp in case of the gradient of uh, elution. So selectivity wise, uh, the colon dimensions does not impact onto the isotope system. And uh, of course, depending upon the colon dimensions, uh, the selectivity varies because the particle size 5 microns, uh, 3.5 microns, or two mi sub 2 microns particles you can use on a base based on the exposure you can use. So in that case, uh, you can play with the gradient profile and get the good selectivity based on the column dimensions. What you are so, standard particle size 5 micrometers, 4.6 internal ID, and 25 centimeters or 15 centimeters length of the column is very common. But the UPLC, if you take the less than 2 micron, that 1.7 or 1.8 micrometer particle size are available with the lesser length, like 5 uh, centimeters or uh, 3 centimeters. 10 centimeters is maximum length you can use in case of UPLC ultra performance, the ultra high performance with the ultra generic terminals. The stationary means columns are various sizes available, like uh, 25 centimeters length is very common, 
15 centimeters also now it is becoming very standard and uh, people are using that to get the uh, lesser run time and of course 10 centimeters and 5 centimeters are also there. 5 and 3 centimeters columns are very common to use in case of uh, LCMS analysis. So the, uh, we know that uh, there is a HPLC means uh, RP HPLC, reverse phase HPLC, and uh, normal phase HPLC. There are two promotes very commonly used or known. In the stationary phase, the uh, chemistry is, for example, polar stationary phase, silica gel is uh, silica is their material. In that case, that is normal phase HPLC. And the solvent commonly used, the model is commonly used with the hexane with combination of say methanol or methanol is a Listed. All these uh, solvents can be used, but of course, UV cutoff range are we have to take it to consideration. Generally, the methanol, ethanol, these are the solvents along with the XN is very common to use to have a good UV cutoff, like 210 or 250 nanometers UV cutoff is there, and then we can use uh, those solvents uh, for better visibility. So, the silica is represented with all hydroxyl groups here, the stationary phase. Once the highly polar analyte is trying to impact with the highly polar stationary phase, so that takes more time to get it out. And medium polar compounds having the uh, minimum interactions, of course, the non-polar compounds should not have much interaction with the stationary phase. That reason the non-polar compound will be the first polar to the medium polar and followed by the highly polar in case of normal phase chromatography. In case of reverse phase chromatography, we know that uh, there is like uh, uh octotic alcaline, C18 or C8 columns are very common. This here hydrophobic chain is. So the non-polar analyte is trying to interact with this non-polar stationary phase very well. That's the reason that takes more time uh, to elute than compared to the uh, medium polar uh, or highly polar. Highly, highly polar compounds trying to elute very fast uh, when compared to the non-polar because non-polar compounds interact with the non-polar stationary phase very high. So we can say like attracts like, unlike disaster like. So Non-polar compounds are trying to interact with non-polar stationary phase more time that reason that takes more uh, time to value that. Here the example C18 is the stationary phase and mobile phase, uh, we can say polar mobile phase because the stationary phase is non-polar, we are using mobile phase as a polar. So what are the combination of solvents like a like with another in common to use? So that is reverse phase experience. Of course, uh, in case of pharmaceutical reverse phase experience is very common, especially in case of so there is a theory, uh, we can say hydrophobic interaction theory. We are saying that uh, reverse phase HVLC is common to use. In that case, the hydrophobic chains like uh, CH3, CH2, CH2, this big alkyl chain that is there, that is trying to interact with this uh, autodecal cell and C8 in our C8 material. That's the reason that is diluted in the water. Yes. So like other polar compounds like uh, molecules contain carboxyl groups, UOH and H2 are hydroxyl groups. Definitely, those are polar in nature. So that will be the first followed by the alkyl chain containing the analyte. So that is the theory how it works in case of the species. So just to uh, get a uh, uh, remind our basics, we can see here the polarity how increases in case of solvents. Hexane is non polar and water is highly polar. So, like uh, isopropyl alcohol, uh, all these are medium polar uh, solvents. In case of function groups, depending upon the analyte which contains the different function groups, that polarity also we can uh, guess. Carboxylic acids containing the analytes are highly polar, so and uh, aliphatic hydrophobic carbons like this, like this alkyl chains that is present, that is known as non-polar function groups. So based on the function groups or number of function groups present on the molecule, we decide the hydration order. Of course, the pH conditions what we are going to use also make the ionized the analytes so that reason elution order will change. That is part of your mother development for your. So that is a brief about the stationary phase, and now we we'll see the detector, which are some of the important detectors, not very common detectors. So of course, detector is required since the presence of measure the amount of the sample component is required. Once the column separate the analytes and reach into the components, it reach to the detector. The responsibility of the detector is to sense it and give some signal. So high sensitivity required low noise and wider linear range. Say for example, one ppm to thousand ppm is the requirement to make it reach. So it is giving more linearity and that is more useful for the low concentration data machine to high concentration data machine. Response to all type of compounds is also pretty much important. And otherwise, selective detectors, detectors which are suitable for specific chemicals. So and non-destructive. 
So you didn't just what you're going to use must be uh, non-descriptive, not spoil your analyte, and you should give back the required in case of the business. Of course, in addition to that, what we require is a cheaper detector and of course reliable results and easy to use. These are the word uh, good detector we consider. The function of the detector is to monitor the analyte, which is the output on the call. The output of the detector is electrical signal that is proposed to the property of the mobile phase and also. So if it is both depending upon the uh, mobile phase as well as so you, that is called a bulk property detector. So like refractive mixing detectors are uh, bulk property detectors. Other detectors commonly use like this new detectors are solute property depends upon the solute uh, mm -hmm. emerging out from the column so that gives response to that. So that is the here uh, described like one is bulk property detectors, that is refractive index, some of the solute property detector, like uh, UV visual detector and other property detectors are also important. So there are a good number of detectors available. Uh, the HPLC, one is used to detector, uh, which is very common to use. Then based on the molecule, contains chromophore. That type of molecules can be very easily analyzed, highly sensitive detector, very commonly used with HPLC. And next one is fluorescence. Active molecules can be analyzed with fluorescence detector. Next one is photodiode array detector, PDU. It is also like advanced, we can say, uh, uh, detector from the UV visible uh, range. That is for the diode array detector. The importance of this detector is for the peak purity analysis. We'll see what effect it now. Of course, electrochemical detector and the refracting detector is one which is for the uh, non chromophoric compounds. Uh, some signal is required, some quantity we want to determine, maybe less sensitive. Refractive index value uh, if it is uh, will be available for the all the analytics. So, based on the refractive index differences, we can able to measure the quantity present. That is a refractive index detector. We can say it is a universal detector. Next is mass detector, which is highly sensitive, not only quantitative analysis, but spectral information. If you want to get more sensitive detection, in that case, mass spectrometer detector is one which is can be coupled with HPLC and SLC and SLC. So, current detector, light scattering, operate light scattering detector is one which is suitable, like uh, refracting this detector uh, for the non chromophore canal. But uh, how I refracting this detector? That's not suitable for not suitable for the gradient illusion mode because if you change some small composition mobile phase uh, that will change the refracting index value and uh, leads to the change in the values of the uh, quantitative analysis. But the reason we cannot use refracting index for the detector for the quantitative um, gradient mode. But the alternate for that is uh, uh, light scattering detector, which is uh, suitable for non chromophoric compounds like R detector, but it is compatible even with the uh, Gradient illusion that is meant to be the starting detector that is the operator light scanning detector. And also, I will try to give some information about that later. Initially, we see the photodiode array detector. Of course, we know very well about the UV visible detector. So, where light is passing through the gradient system and uh, one is, side is going towards the sample. And but in case of photodiode array detector, total uh, light is passed through the sample. From there, it is going to be gradient. gradient. From there, it is passing towards photodiode detector. So, polygrammatic radiation after passing through the sample is dispersed by a fixed gradient and then passed on to the array of photodiodes. These diodes are 512 photodiodes that are available. So, each will monitor at least one single wavelength and they will store all the data. Each, detect, uh, each diode measures a narrow range of wavelengths and the spectrum being measured simultaneously. That is photodiode. Parallel data activation, processing, and storage of spectrum can be done typically within 0.5 seconds and compared with the several minutes in cases of uh, conventional instruments. And as there are no moving parts to wear out, wavelength resetting errors are reduced, and the instrument is likely to require less maintenance on that than uh, compared to the conventional instruments. The ability to make uh, multiple wavelength measurements is possible here, and the speed of data acquisition means the various signal averaging features can be adapted. So that the reason uh, noise is reduced and improved sensitivity. So, in addition to the uh, retention time at the x axis and uh, sensitivity intensity at y axis, there is a z axis that is wavelength. The UV spectrum you can able to see here in the field detector, which is not possible in case of a regular UV detector. That is the main bit of a field photo layer detector. So, that's the reason you can check the peak purity analysis. So, peak purity analysis is possible because of wavelength we can able to work in case of wavelength. We'll see that how it is possible. If you go and see this, 
the given the wavelength. For example, here if you say L, uh, NHMRs are here. NHMRs use the same uh, uh, spectrum you can see here. Uh, of course, uh, we, we extract the uh, chromatogram and uh, see the UV region spectra of each uh, peak here. One is uh, having the different uh, UV region spectrum, another may be uh, different, uh, uh, they are not matching each other. Then we can say there are two different uh, components here. So x axis is uh, here uh, in the chromatogram, and color you can see here the chromatogram, and uh, y axis is absorbance. And if you click each peak or each point of the peak or any, any part of the chromatogram, you will get the UV spectrum. At least I have some UV evidence. So based on the comparison between the uh, uh, two different points, you can say the compound is same or different. Of course, if it is two different, you definitely get a different UV spectrum. So 3D UV visible detector with the ability to record the LC chromatogram at a different wavelengths simultaneously. Record the UV visible spectrum of each peak as it elute from the column as well as other points in the chromatogram. Okay. So the UV visible detector is like measures only one layer equivalent or maximum two at the same point. Some UV visible detectors that are receiving the option up to maximum two wavelengths you can set a single part of time. That is the option available. That you use the detector. Say two to four nanometers, two to three nanometers. Two will give both. So say lower wavelength is one, another is a aromatic compound settling, and there is only one over two to four nanometers. But highly sensitive detector, you use the detector is inside. If you know all the compound UV absorbance, then you can happily use the UV detector. So in that case, uh, it is only for SA determination. Of course, if you want to go for UV uh, profiling, uh, you need to see other compounds also. Definitely, there will be different UV absorbance for that. So, that's the reason UV visible detector is not uh, flexible for all applications, especially when you have a So, but the UV visible detector has wider linear range when compared to the detector and slightly better sensitivity compared to the detector. Sensitivity is very high when compared to the UV detector. But uh, multiple applications are possible with the UV detector. That depends upon once you develop a method, you know that what are the UV absorbance of the compound. If it is one or two compounds which are flexible, then you can use a UV visible detector. Otherwise, if you have 10 compounds, Want to measure all one, then uh, period detector is option. So period detector is measures at the many different wavelengths at the same time, and uh, extraction of the chromatogram memory is also possible. Once you analysis is completed, maybe after some time, after uh, some days, if you want to check the uh, UV spectra of each analyte and compare, you will see that uh, it because it is already scanned from the 200 to 800 nanometers. We have like a detailing lamp is there, the lamp is there, the detailing lamp is there for 200 to 400 nanometers, and the next lamp is for 400 to 800 nanometers. It's all a scan. So you have to just uh, recall or uh, just check back to what is the wavelength you want to see. You can see it in the less linear range and slightly less uh, uh, principle in compact with the vector. UV visible spectrum is obtained for every point in the chromatogram. UV visible library can be compiled and used for compound application. Once you're done, so you can keep as a library UV visible spectra, and uh, once you are analyzing another sample, just yes, you want to compare with the library, yes, you can do that is the case. Peak purity function can detect a correlation. Peak is there. Is it having a single analyte responsible to this group, or some correlation is there from the other analyte? So in that way, we can check by using the data. So the three-dimensional view of the uh, UV spectrum is like this. So each point uh, you can select and uh, see how close it is in the response, where it, uh, it is in good response. So here one example application you can see here. When you are doing the method development, you are injecting, for example, in this case, italic acid, benzoic acid, and benzoic acid. There are three uh, components are all there. All these are like there in a single sample. Uh, picture is there. You are injecting that picture to the HPLC by using the Mobile phase condition like phase mineral water that is to 70. And there are like peaks, one, two, three peaks are there. You know that peak one is italic acid, peak two is benzoic acid, peak two is nitrogen. For example, if you want to just uh, increase the resolution to change the mobile phase conditions, say instead of 30% of resonated, you made like 15% only. Of course, you may be change some pH also. At the time, the, there is a chance of alteration of peak conditions. If the first peak may become secondary, secondary peak may become third peak. In case of the detector, we need to inject again standards 
and compare retention time and see it is confirmed that the one is the request of the is going to be as a But if you already acquired the UVs uh, spectrum uh, once it is done, then by looking at the UVs spectrum of its uh, new chromatogram, you can able to easily guess what is the peak one. Here, this is peak one is after uh, changing the model based on the benzoic acid peak one. As a acid becomes peak two. So that is one benefit you can uh, not waste always you cannot uh, depending upon standards alone uh, because uh, uh, method development requires so many private members. So to avoid that uh, minimization of standard uses, you can use the UV supply and get the work done. And uh, of course, uh, this is just to say that always the pure compound used better UV spectra than the, uh, like the sample compound. That's the difference to say that 90% is matching, like some percent is not matching. Uh, but you can see that the green one, the uh, green color one is overlapping with some red color. It's 100% match. Uh, and the second one is uh, like sample, which is uh, not exactly similar. There may be some coalition with other components. If that is there, then uh, supply changes will be used to cover the there. And it is to understand that's So, how you will do the peak purity analysis? There are two different methods available for peak purity analysis. One is known as total peak method. So, peak is there. And uh, there is like you can take some points from the left side of the peak and some points from the right side of the peak and one point <clears throat> peak top and uh, able to compare all these points. If all these are matching 100%, then it is uh, peak purity index is one. One means it is 100% matching. So if it is like only 95% uh, matching, 0.9%, I guess like peak purity index with the value numerically, you can. Fix this numerical value in your software saying that 0.95 to 1.1 is my uh, peak purity index to say it is passed. Then, automatically, once they started analysis, within that 95% or 1.1% uh, one is what is uh, given by you. So, that will be uh, shown as a green color and value is shown as a red color. Of course, you should be at least having 95% above as the uh, peak purity passing criteria. So, peak purity index I need to be getting again. One so if it is coming one, then it will be passed. So it will take randomly some point from the left side of the peak and some point from the right side of the one point from the top. That is total peak method if you opt the option from the top. So next three point method also will be there one point from the left side of the peak and one point from the right side of the peak and one from the top. If you want to just to compare whether all the three points are similar or not, yes, that is also possible. You can do this command and see one side from the uh, up slope. And one from the down slope and one from the peak top. And this is known as a three point method for peak purity analysis. Where it, uh, what is the like, where it passes, where it fails, peak purity analysis. When the target compound and interference are in the same single spectra, the peak purity calculation will not be accurate. You may be seeing that uh, one single peak, but it may be also having some interferences. Both are having the similar spectra, then uh, period literacy is one and same. In that case, it is not successful. When the concentration of interfering is very small compared to the targeting compound, the impurity when the sample is correlating may not be easy to detect. So, even concentration is less. The linear range is start, uh, starting from, for example, 1 ppm, but uh, your impurity or uh, interfering compound is 0.5 ppm. In that case, also, it is not visible to the detector. It may not be able to. Uh, it will pass the peak purity. Yes, it is possible in this single common, but small 0.5% uh, or 0.5 ppm interfering compound is there. The absorbing, uh, absorbance should be within the linear range of period detector to produce a good UV visible spectrum. Of course, we know. Sim uh, sample with high concentration above the linear range of the uh, period detector will produce a distorted spectrum. So, the linearity range, we you know, once that linearity is fixed, you know, because the linearity is followed by the detector. If it is more than that, uh, for example, 1000 ppm is up to that, uh, there is a linear. But you are taking to 1200 ppm to the sample. In that case, uh, definitely uh, the, you will get the start study spectrum. So, in that case, you cannot compare. So, all these are limitations high, very low concentration, very high concentration, and uh, same similar uh, spectra. All these are issues where you cannot uh, successful with the peak purity function. So, advantages like PD detector could analyze samples simultaneously at many different wavelengths. UV visible spectra are useful for compound identification and checking purity as well as uh, finding the optimal observance of the compound 
to select the top of the list and go for quantitative analysis. And universal spectra of many power could be stored in the spectrum libraries and which are useful for compound identifications and uh, relatively robust to the temperature and flow rate fluctuations. So, small changes in the temperature room temperatures or flow rate changes, uh, like a RA detector, there are small changes in temperature, so it will definitely affect your analysis. But in case of a detector, there is no issue. Of course, UV detector also as flexible as a PD detector. Compact with gradient elevations, so all these are advantages of uh, this uh, detector. Limitation seems like uh, slightly less sensitive than compared to the user. We do all functions, but the sensitivity is less. And in addition to that, the UV detector is not uh, suitable for the wavelength for some various wavelength and all these are possible because of the but the PD detector is possible with that. So that the reason peak purity analysis is possible with the uh, PD detector model, not with the UV detector model. Next one is uh, evaporate light scattering detector. The evaporate light scattering detector is like uh, a universal detector, we can say, but the condition is that solute is less volatile than the mobile phase. So, mobile, evaporation is mobile phase, you are evaporating, you are removing the total mobile phase, but the solute should not evaporate during the process. So, in that analyte, in that case, so those type of analytes which are non volatile uh, than the mobile phase, in that case, this is a universal detector, it can be something. The linear range is not wide. UV visible detector is highly linear when compared to PD detector, but uh, ELST is very less linear when compared to PD detector or uh, PD detector. Say, for example, that is uh, from 1 ppm to 1000 ppm, from this we count from here, maybe uh, 1 ppm to say 100 ppm, 50 ppm. Linear range is less. It is intermediate between the UV and RA detectors in terms of sensitivity and can be replaced with gradient relations. We are saying gradient elevations because it's, uh, the previous the RA detector reflecting this electrical purposes of like purposes also like for the non thermoporic uh, compound identification. The purpose is also evaporation light scattering, it is also for non thermoporic compound majorly. So, but uh, that is not suitable for gradient elevation, but it is suitable for gradient elevation. ELST is useful for detection of solutes that do not pose a significant chromophore but should not be used for the thermal level solutes. So, because we are using here temperature, that temperature should not damage the solute only to remove the mobile phase. That is the major uh, point to be remembered here. So, again, uh, it is gaining a lot, lot of effort in the digital celebrity as a universal detector because it is in signals for both uh, uh, chromophoric and non chromophoric compounds. ELST uh, response does not depend upon the optical characteristics of the sample, like UV uh, detector. Uh, uh, we see here the uh, ELST detector, there is a column at the end that is flushing towards the nebulizer. Nebulizer is responsible to make these small droplets to a mobile phase along the light because nitrogen gas is uh, coming from the side of this detector. And uh, there is a temperature will be given to that uh, 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 to the ELST. So then known as uh, chamber, a drip tube, heated zone. Evaporation takes place there, the mobile phase. And the N light only remains. Once the N light is only remains, like the operational solvent is taking place, the light will be passed onto that. The scatter lattic light will be uh, measured by the photomultiplier tube, so photodiodes. So that signal will be amplified, giving as a signal. You can see here. Inside the nebulizer, the color plane passes through a medium mixed with nitrogen gas and forms droplets, dispersion of droplets. That is the stage one. The stage two is mobile phase evaporation. The droplet passes through the heating drip tube where the temperature is given to the mobile phase. So, mobile phase will be evaporated. And that is the uh, step two. The step three is this small particle passes through the closed cell where uh, the laser light will be heat and uh, will get the signal. That is the good detection. Any non volatile compound, either it can be chromograph. Uh, Chromophoric or non chromophoric can be detected with the LST. Response is based on the mass and the amount of the light scatter, but not depends upon the excitation coefficients, like the UV detector or refractive index values in case of our detector. So it depends majorly on the mass of the sample and the amount of the light scatter. So generally, the amount of light scatter depends upon the mass we are using. That in that way, there is an accurate way of estimation actually activity of the sample. ELST provides a stable baseline and is suitable for gradient elevations, improved resolution, or 
Talks und so habe ich mich gefragt, ob es gibt, dann auch so ein bisschen Mutter zu Walter, wo wir für diese Kategorie Location, like Elsie, wir sind auch so, wie das irgendwie für Walter, of course, in the same way, it's also in the group, Walter, wo wir für diese Kategorie Modifier, was wir für diese Kategorie Modifier. The noise-based solvents and noise-based modifier is non-volatile and excessive baseline noise and uh, spiking will occur because of that. So that is the issue with the uh, ELC. So volatile components and noise-based modifiers are going to be used in case of ELC, of course, we're going to use in case of LCMS2. So it has to be used like uh, trichloroacetic acid, formic acid, acetic acid, you know, the reduce the band or the Basis like ammonia, methylamine, ethylamine, and trigonamine are the two features. Of course, you can use like ammonia farm, like ammonia state, ethylamine farm, like this are of course. Their pH range is something here. Of course, iron pairing agents are also you can use for the non retained compound to retain on the column and you could uh, repeatable results. So, iron pairing agents are also can be used, like which are volatile in nature. Pentacorocopianic acid, metacorocopianic acid, yes, you can use. So, let's see one example here the paclitaxel from the taxis brown polygon, the column is C18, so 10 centimeters length in standard amount from 4.5. Phosphate copper was used and pH is near to 3, that is 2.75, and of course, gradient deletion, one number per day, to be reduction of people to handle it. The same condition, uh, just to remove the mobile phase because mobile phase is a unvolatile in case of UV liquid, fine. But in case of ELHC, UV volatile buffers, ammonia is uh, used in case of uh, phosphate buffer, phase 3. Of course, ingredient program was used, one number for it, same. Of course, detector is ELST, meaning to do some temperature, drip temperature to evaporate the mobile phase, that is 95 degrees temperature was given. And of course, nitrogen gas flow is required for the evaluation process. So that is three standard liters per minute. That is the flow of the nitrogen gas. So if you compare first one with the second figure, the first one shows that it is more than 95 or 96 percent purity. But the second one shows that uh, the first one, uh, there are two uh, peaks you can see here. The peak one is unknown to us, and the peak two is a uh, peak one. Uh, first one diluted is unknown to us, and the peak one is the uh, same as the uh, at the axle, and now the actual purity you see it is not even 50 percent. In the first initial case, by using the user injector, we assume that it is more than 90 percent. But if you see the which is non chromophoric impurity which is present in that, that is giving good response in the LHD, but not in case of UV injector. So we can say that actual purity we can get here a better way than the UV injector because. UV visual detector, you are specifically considering one UV uh, chrome uh, uh, wavelength. So that makes like uh, it is 100% uh, for that range, but uh, other areas is not uh, seen in the case of UV detector. That's the reason the purity is not accurate in that case. ELSP is accurate. So uh, in case of UV visual detector, you need to derivatize the amino acids because chrome pores are uh, not available there. But in case of ELSP without any derivation, you can see the good intensity peaks with all the acids. So here, drip tube temperature is 115 degrees to uh, ever put in the phase. And of course, nitrogen gas flow, it is uh, 2.5 standard liters per minute. We can use and uh, so we can get the good uh, separation of um, different amino acids. That is the application of uh, ELSP. So I do this example of PDA and ELST detectors. Uh, uh, of course, UV visual detector is very well known. Of course, PDA detector is just advance of uh, UV visual detector. So coming to the next one is LCMS. Uh, HPLC can be completely mass spectrometry. If it is done, then uh, you can do uh, better things than the uh, HPLC alone. That part you will see here in case of LCMS. This is the LCMS. Uh, the first one is like the first front end is HPLC, and the second one is mass spectrometry. It is a time of flight mass spectrometry. Then you can see that too. It is a time of flight mass spectrometry. What is that also? You can see it coming slides. So, if it is like a small introduction about the uh, LCMS, uh, in case of uh, samples which are very few, you will go offline analysis by UV, IR, mass spectrometry, and NMR. 
and uh, uh, then uh, uh, you can get the data and uh, say this is a compound identification and stuff. But you don't have the few sample with you. You need to separate that. If it is a volatile compound, this is choice, and if it is not volatile, sample, it feels a choice. So, can you connect this LCRDC to the mass spectrometry to get the online structural information or online since two quantification? So, that is the hyphenation DC with mass PCMS, the FLC, MS, LCMS. So, a uh, single component direct mass analysis is possible. Uh, it is pure compound. So, it is a volatile compound and thermally stable that on impact PA and CA for the Annihilation technologies you can use. And of course, non volatile and thermally unstable. In that case, you can use uh, FAP, fast static bombardment, PSA, microscopy annihilation, quality. These are the different annihilation methods in case of uh, non volatile uh, samples. In case of volatile, PA, certain impact, and the But the sample mixture is there. So, chromatographic uh, methods for separation like uh, volatile samples and thermally stable GC. And a non volatile samples and thermally unstable, then the LC is the choice. Then, why, why you want to go for mass spectrometry? Because it is a very speed technique, you can, uh, it can scan in seconds. And uh, sensitive detection, small concentration gives good signal and uh, selective uh, for specific uh, analytes and give better sensitivity. And modular weight determination is possible. You can fragment the molecule and get the fragmentation pattern based on that. Uh, you can guess the structure of the molecule. So that means in mass spectrometry it can be coupled directly to the LCRDC that gives more information than offline having some 5 mg and again dissolve it and uh, inject it to the mass spectrometry. So some of the impurities cannot be separated. So a small quantity, maybe 0.1% or less than that, then separated by LC and sent to the mass spectrometry. So that is possible with hyphenation technology. Principles of mass spectrometry is also known to us just to give brief mass is an instrument uh, designed to separate gas phase ions account to their mass to charge ratio. There are three important components in mass spectrometry. One is annihilation chamber. Sample need to be ionized. Ionized samples, mass to charge ratio only determined. Simple mass cannot be determined. So annihilation is important, followed by the analyzer. Analyzer will analyze, uh, analyzer will analyze uh, the fragments and separate, uh, send one of the another to the detector. The analyzer used like electrical, uh, electrical uh, field or a magnetic field to send one fragment at a given point of time. Since motion and separation of the ions is based on electrical and magnetic field, it is mass to charge ratio, not only simply mass to be detected. The analyzer operates under high vacuum conditions so that the ions can travel to the detector with a substance. Field. So these are the most so about the mass spectrometry. You go and see the literature in 1982, uh, Patrick Akinon. Uh, he discovered a book uh, saying about uh, how it can be coupled with the LC with mass spectrometry. So, assume that the one is goldfish, which is living in the water always, and uh, is not uh, having any capability to fly. The other one is parrot. The parrot is always there in the cave. So, is it possible to couple these two uh, animals and to get a hybrid one? To get from these two, uh, two animals. So, one is high pressure uh, liquid medium, it is uh, there like a fish, then a zoom, it's PLC. Another one is uh, high vacuum condition that is mass spectrometry, assuming like it is there in the air like a parrot. There is a chance of giving birth to the parrot fish, hyphenation, it's PLC with mass, is it possible or not? So, of course, need to be get some uh, efforts from the both. Uh, uh, HPLC side as well as mass side to get the hyphenation HPLC MS or LC MS to consider it. So then there is a possibility of the uh, uh, like copy um, combining these two technologies, advantages, and get the hyphenation technique of LC MS. Parrot fish. That is the thought process in the 1980s. And how uh, this uh, there is a possibility to keep these two techniques coupled. One is split the flow from the LC instead of one ml flow can we make 0.1 ml flow so that the wall, the solvent cannot be entered into mass detector because vacuum conditions require the mass. That is one way of thinking. Another one is just increase the pumping speed in mass. Just remove not only air, remove even solvent which are coming from the HPLC so that the vacuum will not be disturbed in mass spectrometry. That is another process. And use capillary columns. So the capillary columns are very fine, like less uh, internal ID. 
so that you can use less volume of chlorine. That is another way of thinking. And uh, remove the solvent uh, before entering the mass spectrometer. Instead of just sending the sample directly to the mass spectrometer, remove all the solvent, mobile phase, and then send on the analyte. So uh, there are like, uh, instead of all these things, can we ionize all this sample uh, sample at atmospheric ionization? Can we ionize the sample at atmospheric pressure? Then ionized analyte can send to the mass spectrometer. That is actual uh, process here. That is nothing but atmospheric pressure ionization. In case of GCMS, the ionization chamber also will be there in vacuum condition. But in case of LCMS, ionization chamber away from the high vacuum conditions, vacuum will be there with the analyzer and detector. There are three important components there in the mass spectrometry. One is uh, ionization chamber, the second one is analyzer, the third one is detector. The ionization chamber will be away from the uh, uh, this uh, vacuum conditions. So that is known as atmospheric pressure ionization in case of LCMS. This atmospheric pressure ionization is one like uh, electros uh, have any uh, three different ionization in this atmospheric pressure ionization is possible. One is known as electrospheric ionization, ESI, next one is atmospheric pressure chemical ionization, APCA, third one is atmospheric pressure photo ionization. There are three different atmospheric ionization problems possible here. Ionization occur outside the high vacuum region of the instrument analyzer. Eliminate the difficulties associated with the introduction of the LCA unit to the vacuum chamber can be minimized, and many small organic molecules are compatible with this uh, ionization. But no single technique, we cannot say like only electrospheric ionization is uh, suitable for the LCA or LCA. So, but in general, electrospheric ionization is successful more than 80% for the organic molecules. Next one is uh, APCA, the first part ionization for the a slightly non-polar components and that must be the photo ionization is the highly non-polar components in that way we can tell. How it is electrospray ionization? Electrospray generates analyte ions in the solution before the analyte reaches the mass spectrometer. The LC element is sprayed, nebulized into the chamber at atmospheric pressure, depending on strong electrostatic field and heat in the gas. So you are giving an nitrogen gas which is heated already. So it is tending to this uh, chamber, the reason this all and droplets which are there along with the analytes, they're trying to cooperate because of this drying gas. The electrostatic field causes further dissociation of the analyte molecules and the heated drain gas causes solvent in the droplets to evaporate. So we can see here, as the droplet shrinks, the charge concentration in the droplet increases. We are giving the, uh, giving the uh, temperature to nitrogen gas so that is evaporating the solvent of these uh, molecules. Even when the evaporative forces between the ions, if the like charges exceeds and the forces will be there, ions are ejected uh, from each other. So once the solvent is removed, the same charge mol uh, molecules may not exist together. It is coming out as small droplets. These ions are attracted and passed through the capillary sampling orifice into the mass analyzer. Next step is mass analyzer. Mass analyzer is already there in vacuum condition. It is trying to uh, seek uh, this uh, charged ions to come inside because it is already charged. In addition to that, there is a vacuum condition. So the analyte with charge will be focused towards this analyzer pattern. So some gas phase reactions, mostly proton transfer, charge exchange, can also occur between the time ions are ejected and through droplets and they are reached into the mass. Large molecules of, a, uh, of an acquire more than one charge, and the instrument is around the working function of up to maximum of 300 mass to charge ratio. But the molecules are high marker weight compounds, it acquire more charges. So, for example, 10,000 mass is there for the molecule, say 14 molecules. So, it is charged with 10 uh, uh, points in the molecule. So, 10,000 with 10, it is coming as 1,000 mass to charge ratio molecule. So, in that way, up to 3000 mass to charge ratio range is very uh, easily suitable to analyze this molecule. So, when large molecules acquire many charges, mathematical process called deconvolution is often used to determine the actual marker weight of the pump. So, charges are 10, so 10,000 by 10 is 1000 only, but uh, what is actual marker weight? We can go back by deconvolution software and be able to get what is actual marker weight of the compound based on the number of charges it acquires. So, uh, electrospray is especially used for analyzing large biomolecules such as the proteins, peptides, oligo nucleotides, but also can analyze small molecules, blood molecules, ring the and sulfur conjugates, etc. 
So it is, I would uh, just so they can be a part of the industry. So there are like a pause to annihilation mode and negative annihilation mode, PSA pause to where it is sort of. So analyte which can take at least one function group, which can exist in a protonated form. So like primary amine, secondary amine, and tertiary amine. So these are the highly sensitive in case of PSA positive. And the analytes which lack a readily protonable group, but uh, polarizable positive and negative charge uh, polarization is possible. That is moderately sensitive in case of PSA positive. MIs, thiazoles, aldehydes, and ketones are uh, moderate sensitive in case of PSA positive. Like uh, very non-polar analytes are very poor in PSA positive, like hydrocarbons, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, and dielectric uh, carbons. Name to, uh, name to mode of QC ESI. So, analyze which contain at least one function view which can exist in a deprotonated form in solution. Highly sensitive to be hypoxic plus, CO minus HH plus, phenol, and O minus and H plus. So, that type of analyte, which are highly sensitive in case of ESI, negative. Of course, remaining the same like uh, amides, thiazoles, and all the ketones are moderately sensitive because of polarization and non polar compounds like hydrocarbons, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, and aromatic alcohols are very less uh, sensitive, even negative mode of ESA. That is about ESA. Coming to the next one is ATC, uh, atmospheric pressure chemical ionization. Here, we are giving some temperature also. 250 to 400 degrees uh, temperature. There is a vaporizer, there is a block. Temperature can be given to that. That is up to 400 degrees. The heat vaporize the liquid. Because of the temperature, we are giving the solvent, the mobile base water, uh, sending along the light. That will be evaporated. Molecules are ionized by the electron discharging from the corona. In addition to that uh, uh, heating here, there is a corona discharge needle be there that is producing electrons. These electrons trying to bombard with the uh, solvent molecules and ionize that solvent molecules that uh, will transfer the charge to the molecule. So this is like an intermediate. The solvent will be ionized by the corona discharge needle electrons. So those will transfer the charge to the molecule. So the molecule will get the now charge and able to uh, enter into the mass analyzer. That is the way it is going now. So the solvent ions and transfer charge to the analyzer molecule through chemical reaction that is known as chemical, uh, chemical ionization. The ions, uh, the inlet ions pass through a capillary sample or a piece into the mass analyzer. APC is available to wide range of polar and non-polar molecules, the vertical. Uh, for the non polar as well as polar molecules, and of course, it is rarely results in multiple charges. In case of ESA, multiple charges are possible, between 10 uh, different uh, charges are possible, but here in case multiple charges are not there, but the reason mass range is up to maximum of uh, 1500. Due to this, uh, because of uh, there is a temperature involved here up to 400, 250 degrees minimum to 400, that the reason high molecular weight compound may be destroyed. So, that the reason. Uh, here, uh, it is having its own limitation. It is not sort of a high water rate compounds. APC is, uh, is used with non normal phase chromatography more often than uh, uh, electrospray annihilation. So, electrospray is more uh, common to use with the uh, reverse phase experience with uh, APC is sort of with the normal phase experience applications. So, compounds that are available to APC is complementary to ESA. ESA, which is not sensitive, you can try with the APC and you will get the Good signal here. APC offer better sensitivity for the less polar analytes when compared to the ESA use more polar analyte, good sensitivity. So limitations are like this: many of the high polar, high molecular weight analytes, which can be successfully analyzed using ESA, here will be decomposed because of high temperatures. Extensively fragmented under APC conditions. So when there is high molecular weight compounds are not with the APC. Thermal decomposition during flash evaporation, fragmentation resulting from the internal energy impaired by the chemical animation is possible because of uh, high temperature as well as uh, chemical reactions. So, next one is APPA, atmospheric pressure photo annihilation. APPA for the LCMS is a relatively new technique. APCA, a vaporized convert the LCA into the gas phase. But here in this case, a discharge lamp will be there which generate photons, which are having different uh, ionization energies, narrow ionization energies will be there. So instead of solvent molecule to be ionized and transfer the charge from the solvent to the analyte in case of uh, APCA, in APPA, that must be the photo ionization, this uh, 
narrow range of uh, this discharge lamp will generate photons which are have less uh, uh, narrow range of ionization energies to be selected and sending to directly to the electrolyte molecule to ionize. So once these are ionized, yes, the uh, ionization uh, analyzer will allow that ionized molecules to inside uh, because of high vacuum conditions. So that is the way you are not uh, uh, taking the help of the solvent, you are directly ionizing the analytes in case of uh, atmospheric photo ionization with the help of discharge lamp, which is uh, generated photons with a different ionization analysis. The range of energies is carefully chosen to ionize the, as many analyte molecules as possible while, uh, while minimizing the ionization of some solvent. Lamp. So the ionization energy, what you are choosing is carefully chosen. To avoid the ionization of the solvent molecule, you are targetedly ionizing only analyte molecules. So the resulting ions passing through the capillary sampling orifice, that is a state of the analyzer, and that is uh, which is to the analyzer, where the analyzer will take the uh, like uh, separate or one by one, it is sent into the detector based on the Boston charge ratios. ABP is applicable to many of these. Uh, same compound that are uh, typically analyzed by the APCA, like non polar compound which are well analyzed by the APCA. The same thing you can apply with the uh, APP ISO. It shows particular promise in the two applications highly non polar compounds in the low flow rates where APCA sensitivity is sometimes produced. But where the APCA scale fails for the non polar compounds also, in that case, ABPA is the best option for you. So, with less flow rates, uh, you can analyze. Mm. In all cases, the nature of the analytes and the separate function conditions, what we are choosing for HPLs initially, have a strong influence on which ionization technique you could be choosing. So, are you using the reverse phase HPLC or non reverse HPLC or buffers? What you are going to use? All this also impact more to choose which ionization mode you need to choose. Is it a ESL or APC or ARVTP to get the best results? The most effective technique is not always easy to predict. But uh, if you have plan perfectly, then you get the uh, good results. So, just to compare all these uh, three ionization methods, atmosphere ionization is suitable for high molecular weight compound because of uh, more charges uh, sites are there. So, deconvolution you can apply and get to the molecular, active molecular weight, but it is mostly towards highly polar compounds that is called because it represented with the high molecular weight and uh, high polar site. Next one is APCA, is also like a High polar to be non polar, uh, but not high as high as with the AP or ESA. Next one is APCA, APPA. So, coordination is uh, where the APCA fails, uh, non polar compound, highly non polar, we can say, and compared to the APCA, it is more in that case. That is about uh, ionization uh, techniques ESA, APCA, APPA. Once finite analyte, which is contained for positive charge ratio, is allowed inside the Analyzer where vacuum is there. So, what different analyzers uh, gives the different names to the LCMS. So, quadrupole is which is very successful traditionally used, that is a quadrupole analyzer. You are saying triple quad, single quad instruments, these are the quadrupole based analyzers, uh, LCMS. Let's talk what we see in the figure first initially, that is time of flight mass spectrometry, where for accurate mass analysis, structural interpretation part, then in that case, uh, talk is one which is successful in that. Then this one is ion trap, which is have some ions and uh, bombarded with the gas and the fragment further. So MS power N. So each fragment can be further fragmented, and from that you can guess the structure. That is the ion trap. So you can use also for structural information to get. So in that way, water pool, time of fire, ion trap uh, are very commonly used and like support there are other magnetic sector, other uh, layers are also there that are very commonly in this part because. Portable and of flight are very common. Of course, ion trap is also it can be used for such interpretation purpose if you want to. In addition to the tutor, each have advantages and disadvantages depending upon the requirement to perform analysis. So, portable, there are portable basics, of course, there are four parts are available, all are parallel to each other, which is scale in between these four. And like hands are directed towards the center of the scale. Voltage applied to the rods generate electromagnetic fields. These fields, electromagnetic fields, a mass to charge ratio will be allowed in its given point of time. Quadruples tend to be simplest and least expensive mass analyzers. So these are very common to use in single quad and triple quad mass. 
There are two modes in this one is scan mode, another one is uh, sim, uh, circuit ion monitoring. In scan mode, this small uh, mass analyzer monitoring the range of mass to charge ratio. You are fixing some scan from the say 10 mass to charge ratio to the thousand mass to charge ratio. Once you fix that, you scan in that mass range. Scan mode is typically used for the qualitative analysis to get the mass spectrum. Or for a contrary to when all the energy mass are not known in advance, at that time we just have been scanning and see what is the, is the actual uh, mass spectrum. Next one is selected ion monitoring scene mode. Mass and monitor only few mass to charge ratios here. You can give the I want 50 to mass to charge ratio. You can say like the, uh, 200 mass to charge ratio. In that way, you will scan that particular ion. And uh, so that uh, is useful for the quantity analysis. Uh, for the, based on the intensity of this. Uh, so this uh, uh, representation of this scan mode with this uh, uh, different uh, fragments here and the sim mode here is like one or two bits here. So, but intensity is very good because the sim, the sim because it is for particular mass. So a particular mass we are uh, selecting there. But about, uh, <clears throat> next one is the time of flight mass spectrometry. The theory behind this is like a time of flight mass and laser, a uniform electromagnetic force is applied to the all the ions at the same time and causing them to accelerate down to a flight chain. So, for example, like it is like a running race, you are giving the same condition to the, all the uh, participants and not them to run because all conditions are similar to them. They are automatically the lighter one who is a lesser weight person is traveling fast and trying to reach the goal initially. So, followed by the more weight person, followed by the higher weight person. So, based on the mass to charge ratio, the travel capacity varies. So, time of flight mass analysis have a wide range of masses with the accurate information is possible. So, that electromagnetic force is similar to all, so that there is a lighter elements reaching to the target first, followed by the medium mass to charge ratio, followed by Higher mass to charge ratio. So, in that way, that is time of flight mass spectrometry will work. So, low mass to high mass, you can see here. So, different colors you can put here. The yellow one is light water mass rate, that is the reaching to the first, and the reason yellow is indicated, but mass to charge ratio is for that is less. Next one is uh, green one, which is a uh, nest bigger mass value, or the red one, or the pink one, or the other yellow, which is uh, water weight is higher than the initial yellow, and of course, like that. The, uh, the reaching time is the time of flight. The time required to fly reaching the, to the uh, goal is uh, different uh, from each uh, ampere. This one is ion trap mass uh, analyzer. An ion trap mass analyzer consists of uh, a circular ring electrode plus two end caps. So you can see that a pink color one, pink color uh, ones are like uh, ring electrodes. Uh, two end caps blue color one that makes a chamber. Ions enter the chamber or trap. Once the ions are entered to the chamber, then you will be trapped by the electromagnetic field. The specific electromagnetic field is given, so they cannot uh, go away from the chamber. Another field was now applied once they, it was trapped to selectively eject the ions from the trap. So another electromagnetic field applied, so that uh, electromagnetic field allow one uh, mass to charge ratio to eject it out. So ion traps have been advanced uh, advantage of being able to perform multiple stages of mass spectrometry without additional mass analyzer. So you can trap this. Once you trap, you can allow one gas, reacting gas, and uh, fragment it, and then allow it to go out. So that is the possibility of trapping the ion and the fragment it. So that is MS4, and MS1, MS2, MS3, MS4. Like that, you can see some of the uh, competition. So that is ion trap mass spectrometry to check the some fragment, how it is, uh, what is it is contains, what, what are the different parameters present. So for the structural information, this ion trap mass spectrometry is helpful. So mass spectrometry, mass spectrum is uh, first generation. So mass spectrometry, mass spectrum you can see here. So there are no big number of uh, fragments because it is a soft generation, not like EA, that can impact the like GCMA. So that there is a, a hard elimination. You are using some PL converts to fragment the molecule, get the different fragments, based on the fragment, you are using the structure. That is a different uh, good number of fragments in the very fragments. So that is a PA, alpha impact. 
the electrospinization does not right, the piece of energy. If you one or two plant will not know. So you can select that uh, fragment and if you want, you can break further and get this structure. That is a soft animation. So soft animation by ESI, electrospinization, APC, normal does not involve fragmentation of the molecule. But you can observe protonated molecule like uh, M plus H, molecule protonated, or MLSH, mass of proton. And you can see some products like sodium edit, M plus sodium, or M plus H solvated with the mobile paper, or is there, M plus H plus H sonatal, or there, M plus H plus ethanol, and neutral losses, some losses of water molecule, loss of ammonia is possible. These are some of the uh, like uh, fragments or you can see uh, main ions in case of uh, like, uh, LCMS, which are soft animation. Oops. You can see here one a compound which is having water weight of uh, 184. So in case of positive ionization mode, uh, M plus H is positive, 184 plus 1, 185 you can see here. Three, five plus. In case of uh, neutral ionization, uh, you can see 184 minus 1, that is 183, you can see in the negative mode. So, M plus 1 and M plus 1 and M plus M minus 1, there are two possibilities, cause 2 and negative. So, in that way, like LCMS and the HPLC basics, we can say here. And uh, so, method development, just I'll use brief overview because we already completed I think, a QVD concept. And just I'll give one example here. So, method development, you want always rapid method, speed analysis, uh, instead of like uh, 40 minutes or 50 minutes one time, if you want only 10 minutes one time. And of course, it must be accurate. It must uh, it need to be, it can be true value. It should not be, uh, give more errors. So, and of course, precise, it must be repeatable decisions. And robust, there should not be changes, small uh, deliberate changes simply happening. Another uh, condition should not change either. So that is robust. These are the primary basis for any analysis to uh, require all this. So of course, you are using different variables. pH you are changing, temperature you are changing, chloride you may be changing. What are the interaction effect of all these variables and generate a design space? So that space, assume that that space is allowing you to play with conditions within that limit. So that is a design space. So that is called as quality by design, limit by quality design, we are saying. So variable like uh, pH uh, and temperature will be there. And of course, uh, based on that is one thing. And of course, uh, based on that uh, gradient pro programming, various pHs and various temperatures, uh, changing it and uh, we can get the design schools. You will see with the example. Here, one example you can take here. You press a 10 and you look at impurities, impurity A, B, C, D, E, F. So, all these impurities are there with the press a 10. We take in here HPLC system, which is uh, contains auto center. And of course, I, we are using different columns for screening purpose C18, C8, canal column, and uh, coastal technology column. We are assuming we want a shorter runtime. That we use and we want a UPLC performance in HPLC that we aim of this study that we mean coaching technology is also used along with Of course, we know that CAD is more persistent. Of course, CAD is required when the runtime should be less. That is CAD. Of course, final column was taken because the all molecules are impurities are derived in something aromatic ring, so pi pi interactions are there. So there is a logic behind all this column to select screening purpose. You mentioned that uh, uh, design expert software is there. To help us for the QBD concept to implement. So, this is the one was used. ATP, different terminology just to familiarize it. Most of you know that ATP is an analytical target profile. Here, I want accurate analysis, faster runtime, less than 10 minutes, and resolution must be more than two. That will be analytical target profile. Next one, QC, QB, uh, CQA, critical quality attributes. I want resolution and uh, retention of the last week. Resolution is important for all the pairs, all the analytes. In addition to that, uh, retention of the last fake means lesser runtime is also one of the critical quality uh, quality to be for me. I said as critical quality to be here. And the risk parameter, the column what you are using, the pH of the mobile phase what you are going to use, column temperature, organic molecule, the flow rate, all these are risk assessment parameters. So something change in this will change uh, robustness of the mineral. So these are the three different stages we pass. Initially, for screening, uh, column chemistry was chosen like one is uh, C18, C8, then I'll 
and PHS are collected 3 and 5.5, and organic modifiers 2 on the instrumental metal. So, based on the experience and based on the unlike uh, structure uh, of our previous method, you can choose this uh, screening strategy. So, once the screening strategy is uh, collected, then go to the method of optimization phase. So, I, once the screening strategy was fixed, then the second stage is optimization. So, like uh, change the temperature, graded flow, and flow rate. So, these are the three different parameters you can play with to optimize method to get to better resolution, better runtime. And say, then these are the uh, generative design stage. So, within this period, within this flow rate, within this gradient profile, we can play with that. There is no change in the analyte detection or resolution issues. So that is optimization phase to generate the design space. So we given this uh, four columns information, two mobile phases, two pH conditions. So four plus two, uh, six plus two, eight variables we are taken into consideration and ask the design space suggest some uh, experiments. So the software suggested 16 different experiments based on this different uh, body, uh, different uh, parameters. So the experiment one is like pH 5.5, another one is 3. So on the uh, organic water estimated in ethanol, four different columns. Of course, gradient program is kept uh, for the for 20 minutes of uh, 20 minutes. And the gradient profile is 5 to 85 percent in case of estimated and 5 to 95 percent in case of methanol. We know that the standard of the estimate is very high and compared to the methanol based on that 10 percent in case of so this is the critical background. We made it uh, as the screening strategy now. Now the existing experiments are kept to overnight and uh, yesterday morning we come and see that what is happening to this. So the relation between the first and second peak, so second and third peak, third and fourth peak, how it is happening. So for the existing experiment, we can see our aim is to get the rapid method with good resolution. Resolution must be more than two, but less runtime. So we will see here the out of the existing different uh, Run times. So the least uh, run time, uh, relation, uh, total runtime is 8.84, that is 14th experiment. But uh, 14th experiment, is it resolving more than two resolution for all the uh, pairs? No. Resolution between third and fourth peak is uh, not having more than two resolution. It is only 1.44. And the reason it is not our above. Next one is uh, 9.75 for runtime. So in this case also, resolution between fifth and sixth is not resolved at all. So this is also eliminated. Next one is uh, uh, 10.41 minutes is the total runtime, which is uh, far west, uh, lesser runtime. We just compare all the resolution in this case. So the least resolution here is 3.21 between five and six, uh, which is called a critical pair. It is being more than uh, three minutes. We require only two. It is more than two, 3.2. In addition to that, we are getting total runtime of uh, uh, nearly 10 minutes, 10.41. Uh, we expected that it must be less than that. Okay, we can go with the optimized ways and we try to optimize that. In that way, it was selected. Uh, experiment number 13 with the required resolution and uh, less possible runtime. Then go back and see what is 13 experiment. 13 experiment is nothing but pH of 3, the basement log and modifier uh, by using sunshell creating column with the great resolution of. Uh, 5 to 80 percent of estimated. So, of course, the constant gradient program was 20 minutes was given. Then we can see how best we can optimize because it is separated. We can then find 4 1 minutes. But definitely, we can go lesser runtime because the resolution required is uh, already achieved more than 3 here because we expect only 2. So, that one was uh, selected in this uh, screening phase. Now, we need to optimize it by taking temperature, gradient slope, and the flow rate. And then generate the design space. Now, again, we ask the design expert, can you suggest to be like a uh, uh, runtime of 10 minutes is one hour uh, expectation, other one is seven. Flow rate 1 ml, 1.5 ml, temperature is 30 and 50. So, based on that, uh, it was given uh, eight different experiments with the combination of all these three variables Tem uh, temperature, flow rate, and product runtime. So, now we can see. Uh, the output of uh, different total rounds with the different possibility 1.5 ml, 1 ml, 7 minutes runtime, 10 minutes runtime, 50 degrees, 30 degrees. So, all these total rounds uh, get it. So,
So you need to analyze manually. No. Of course, you will get the graphs. So from that, you can easily guess which is the best. So the x-axis is temp uh, like uh, 30 degrees, 35 degrees, 40 degrees, 45 degrees. Uh, sorry, uh, that is a uh, 50 degrees like this. So this is there. And flow rate is like 1 ml, 1.1 ml, 1.2 ml like that. So resolution, how it is changing. And uh, in the same way, like flow rate versus runtime, as well as uh, temperature versus uh, uh, total uh, runtime, how it is changing. You can see the resolution, how it is different with respect to that. From that, you can get a conclusion easily. In the same way here also, flow rate versus pH, how it is affected. Uh, and as well as uh, temperature versus pH, how it is affected. So from that, you can say, uh, what is the designed uh, so so column is selected like this uh, partial technology column, tens of uh, 100 mm, 2.1 mm internal ID, 2.6 micrometers, ammonium format initially pH3 it was selected. So it is suitable up to 3.3, pH3 or 3.3, not effective resolution, will not change the product on time. And of course, this network was selected finally, and then linear gradient, uh, initially we thought of up to 65%, but within 65% of uh, gradient, uh, we can separate all the compounds even seven minutes or even up to 10 minutes. So that is the flexibility of it. And uh, one ml flow rate, even up to 1.3 ml flow rate, there is no issue of preservation, overlapping of the interfering materials. And of course, column temperature, even 30 degrees to 35 degrees, there is no issue with this. And of course, the man is all common like and the reduction the reduction to the defense all the compounds to be. So this is output. So within six minutes of uh, for runtime, uh, you can see seven components get separated with the required resolution, short symmetrical phase, um, so that uh, you can use it for the uh, API analysis as well as for analysis because required resolution, short runtime. You can use how many samples you want to get. You can get so within five minutes, the systems are fine. You get results. So, is it really working or not? We are a designing expert. You are saying that uh, predicting for well, you need to verify that whether it is working or not. So, in that way, five different experiments carried out within the design space, which was suggested. So, the experiment one contains the rate of one ml and 30 degrees of temperature and the pH of 3.2. So, experiment two is like uh, uh, within the limit of 1.3, now it's taken 1.2. Next one, three, it is 1.3. And the temperature is 30 degrees, 35 degrees. PH is 3, 3.2, all the possible different variables, five different experiments are carried out to see the flexibility design uh, experiment is, uh, design space is really working for them. For all the impurities along with the drug, most of time with the purpose of time and as well as its uh, impurities. So, design expert, what it is saying and uh, what are the actual experiment results, what are the accuracy if you find out for experiment one, all are about 96.77 accuracy to be. 100.56 accuracy range. The experiment two, also we can see uh, here to 100, 99.492, 100.93. So that is acceptable range of uh, accuracy. Experiment three is also saying it is uh, 97 to 97.25 to 100.56. Experiment four also, it is going to 97.87 to the, or uh, 96.71 to the uh, 100.102.25 uh, range. So all these are experiments are showing that uh, within acceptable range of near to be 100% accuracy within 97 to be one or two uh, recovery. So this is a the verification is also done. So all these are verification experiments you can see, experiment one and two, three, four, and five. So once that is done, uh, select one of that and uh, go for the validation, the linearity, uh, link of detection, link of quantification, accuracy, uh, position, target, interval. So then you can use it. And then it is applied to the population also and check that different tablets injected and see what are the impurities. So for this, uh, we use the HDN polar series PLC coupled with the portable time of LCMS. So for the model, mass hunter workstation software, ESI cost domain. So, just uh, uh, the last uh, spectrum of this shows the uh, measurement of accurate mass and uh, shows that confirmation of the structure of the interviews. So, this work was published in Dunlop Software and Science as a quality reason, a systematic rapid delivery of the matter. 
for the user term select and it's related to this is the superficial porous particle size for the superficial technology. The same way, like uh, another article, what about design and this development of electro stability indicating not only impurities, it's like uh, stability peaks also can be separated and characterized by part of that. Uh, it is also done with the new developments with uh, the Delta Gravity uh, drug. So, yeah, in addition to that, the coenzyme Q10 and its vitamin uh, process related uh, impurities are also used with the design of So, in that way, we can use HPLC and MS and uh, to get the, uh, the uh, general methodology or at least QBD will be more confident. It is regulatory is also flexibility. So, in that way, just uh, to give uh, brief about the LC and LC and uh, uh, some of the limitations. Yes. Thanks a lot uh, for the uh, time. Uh, thank you very much. Hello. Yeah, any doubts, students? Any do anybody any doubts? Now you can unmute yourself and ask directly. Okay, sir, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Narendra, sir. For your valuable you. time. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I will contact you later, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Sir, you can just say I'm meeting her. I am just in phone.